23 minutes last night with the uh, maybe 28 minutes last night. Welcome this evening to another Lewis Cass uh, School Board of Directors meeting. Tonight's a work session. Last night we had our preliminary determination hearing. Tonight is really just for an informational session to again uh, get information out there to our community on the upcoming pro projects we intend to do. Um, so to get started, I guess, first we'll start like every session with the pledge. If you please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. Amy Miller is the only one not present. All the other board members, although not shown on live stream, are in our audience today um, to help if there are any questions that might be for them. So, again, um, to start this off, we, we want to explain the different formats we have to be able to answer questions that you may have. Um, the questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Uh, for those here publicly, which we have a few, um, if you do have a question, we ask that you sign up here at the, uh, at the back of the room, uh, put your information in there, the questions you have, and it will be asked here at the end of the presentation. For those online uh, watching live stream, we have a form here that is available on our Lewis Cass website. So you just go to our home page. On our home page, you'll see about middle of the page to the right side, Bond 2020. You just click on that link there, and then at the top left of the screen, you'll see right here a blue button that says Submit Project Questions Here. So you click that, and that'll go to that previous form that we had up on the screen. You complete that information, that'll come to our administrators, and we've got uh, Greg Crozier Knight here with us again uh, to ask the questions to us at the end of the presentation. Perfect. And this form will be located on our website until we close the final hearing on June the 10th. Uh, please make sure you have all your questions submitted by 6.50 p.m. Any questions uh, that are asked after that, we will get them on uh, one, the 9th or the 10th. And if we hear no questions uh, for a certain time period, we will close the work session down at that point. Yep. So we do ask that all questions uh, tonight, at least, uh, and if we have another meeting on June 9th, that those uh, be pertaining to our construction bond. Uh, any questions regarding other items, uh, such as, you know, when are we going back to school? What's the calendar look like? What's that look like? Those can be asked uh, later at our regular board meetings. Tonight's informational hearing, as well as uh, next week, is is really just about the construction bond. So as I mentioned, uh, last night we did have a preliminary determination hearing. Tonight is an informational work session. Uh, there will be no board action this evening. We are having another one, if it warrants it, on June 9th. If we see that there's uh, most of the questions have been answered and there, or there are redundant questions and we don't see a lot of other information, we will uh, forego the meeting on June 9th and we will have a regular scheduled board meeting uh, where we will finalize this process on next Wednesday, June 10th. So, on to the presentation. First of all, uh, just like last night, I'd like to reintroduce our team that we've got working with us. Uh, we've got KJG Architecture out of West Lafayette, Indiana. They gave their uh, bio last evening. Um, you're welcome to go to their website. You can see a lot of their project history and success. Same with T-Bird Engineering. 
they're our civil engineering firm doing a lot of the landscaping and civil engineering on the project. Again, a lot of school work. You can check out their website as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them. And those are our two engineering firms. We also have Ice Miller uh, out of Indianapolis who is doing all of our bond work. And we have Baker Tilly who is doing all of our financials. So uh, getting into the bond, what is it? Okay, so right here is a, a little picture of what our history looked like. This was some bonds we had originally had uh, to do certain projects, which were listed there. A lot of, uh, a lot of like smaller repairs, as you can see by the size of the bonds. Obviously, as you get into 2017, that was our last large bond, where we did a lot of work on the uh, educational wings, I guess you could say, of our facilities. Did a lot of upgrades in the classrooms, added a lot of technology to the to the uh, different, both the elementary and the high school. We also upgraded logistics and safety. We made new entrances, moved some of our administrative offices to really allow the traffic flow to work a little bit better around our facilities. Um, and so as some of these bonds start to roll off, it gives us an opportunity to again reinvest into our community and into our buildings to again stay ahead of the competition instead of lagging uh, uh, like we have in the past. So. As you had mentioned, uh, Matt, as bonds roll off, and the 2009 bond will be rolling off this December. So uh, when it looks like there's a lot of money out there that we have, uh, we do, but at the same time, we do have that $6.5 million bond that we're rolling off in December. So what does this project look like? Uh, we've got some budget line items here, which we'll, we'll talk about, uh, but uh, this, I guess to start off the big picture as far as the whole corporation, there's some things on the corporation property or administrative office we need to take care of. Uh, a lot of our layout, which we'll show later, depends on uh, whether we're able to secure some additional land around our property here, uh, some adjacent property owners uh, we're working with to hopefully secure that. Uh, we want to enclose the ditch for safety reasons and for cosmetic reasons as well. Uh, there's some backup generation needed at the corporate office to create some uh, redundancy if we were to lose energy. Um, the next area there is the elementary school. We plan on updating the restrooms, water fountains, again adding a generator, upgrading that gym. We were able to do some stuff here at the high school, but uh, the gymnasium at the elementary is needing repair. And the HVAC systems, which that's a big ticket there. We'll get into that because it's even more so on the high school. Um, also, at the elementary, we're looking at replacing a lot of the curbs and sidewalks that are in need of some repair. We're going to add some additional classrooms at the elementary, which we've got some pictures and some renderings on later. Uh, we're also looking at, at adding additional square footage to the elementary cafeteria. Right now, it's too small to really facilitate all the children we have in that space. And then, of course, just like the previous one, we're looking at what can we do to continue to upgrade equipment and technology to, to stay leading the trend as especially we've seen here recently where we've been forced to use a lot more of that stuff. Matt, one of the points that somebody asked me today, uh, which we don't show up here or, or as we go through our conceptual drawings and things, is they had talked about why generators and why some of our technology needs to be updated. Well, with the latest COVID-19 out there, uh, and we, we are doing a lot of our virtual learning now, we have to have our generators backing up all of our technology equipment in all the buildings as well as keeping our technology equipment updated for events when we have to do long-term virtual learning. So somebody had asked me that and I thought it was a good, yeah. good question last time. For sure. So this shows some of those updates here at the elementary. As you can see, a proposed relocation of the ditch to move the playground area uh, inside of the ditch. Uh, I guess before I get into a lot of detail, you'll see a lot of renderings and pictures and ideas up here. These are conceptuals that we asked our uh, engineering and architectural firms to if, if you had an open canvas, what would it look like? So these were just some of their ideas, which we've reviewed and we'll get into deeper detail, but we're not saying it's gonna look exactly like this. But uh, I guess to get back into this, there's a the relocation of the ditch. You can see the addition of uh, new classrooms there on the east side, lining up the hallways. Also in addition to the cafeteria there on the southeast corner. Um, classrooms in the same regard uh, show coming off that hallway this little bit closer image of that as well as what it might look like they show this great rendering uh, to matching our facilities that we have there already um, and what the interior classroom space might look like 
And again, uh, it's not that we've had a large increase in student ADM or average daily membership. We have seen an increase in our ADM, but a lot of this is to gain back for the increase we've seen for our special ed, increase our STEM programs, our robotics, uh, our other high ability programs. The, the, that's what these classrooms will help build and prepare our kids. So it's not due to just increase in student population, but uh, to help support our other educational needs. Yeah, I'd like to interject real quick on that because actually we were given a tour last uh, fall of our uh, couple of our elementary classrooms where they've actually added 3D printers and, and some pretty uh, unique uh, items that, you know, working with other even uh, higher learning to, to get some grants and those take a lot more space. Yeah, yeah we received that $20,000 grant from Purdue took up one of our classrooms and as we look forward to things like that um, to help our kids out and getting more participation from colleges or universities or that that's just one more way we can do it so we have more space. So here uh, again uh, another floor plan of what the elementary might look like there on the right hand side looking through some code stuff to eliminate some of those walls but so it may not look exactly like this but this is the idea, the concept to basically push out the east wall of the cafeteria and maybe some uh, changes in the look of those. So uh, as you'll notice here, uh, pretty obviously with the $11 million mark there, most of our upgrades are going to be at the high school. Uh, so kind of walking through those, uh, we've, we've got upgrades we need to do to the auditorium stage curtains here. We need to replace the HVAC system. Uh, later, a little bit later is roofs. Unfortunately, the HVAC systems and roofs aren't uh, the things you love to be spending money on because they're high dollar items and they really don't show on the appearance of the building, but they are necessary the, uh, to continue to upgrade those to create some high efficiency HVAC systems to reduce our overall cost. Not only that, but they wear out over time, so we just got to replace them. Um, electronic signage for the front of the school, uh, creating uh, updates to the football stadium, which we'll get into a little bit later, updates to overall sports complexes, uh, we, need, we need to add additional baseball and softball fields. Uh, building a new maintenance building to be able to update and maintain our equipment and our uh, buses. Uh, new water fountains in the high school, new exhaust fans. Uh, need a bus parking area outside of there to get our bus parking outside of our uh, student parking areas. Uh, again, new technology and equipment at the high school as well. Replacing curbs and sidewalks around this campus. Additional classrooms at the high school, uh, junior, senior high school, new windows, uh, although they may look the same as some of the newer windows, they definitely don't have the efficiency, so we need to replace a lot of those uh, exterior windows. Uh, new high school lockers, tennis court needs resurfaced, and then a potential asphalt runner from the home to visitor side. So we've got a few pictures here. I'll let Tim kind of walk through what these are showing us. Sure, we could slow, show you 10 slides worth of HVAC uh, that uh, needs repaired, and that's one of the issues we have been seeing is repair, uh, over $600,000 worth over the last five years. And uh, this, uh, the one on the lower left, uh, is ponding of water on the elementary. You can see our HVAC systems, again, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Uh, we also have our Panels, electrical panels need to be updated. They're original electrical panels. You can just see the difference in air handlers, how old they are. They just need to be updated. It's been a long time since we've seen updates to our HVAC systems. And that's at all buildings, uh, so junior, senior, high school, and elementary. So here's again some uh, floor plans and some renderings of what those might look like at the high school. Uh, th this one here, you can kind of see it's located in that little uh, alcove there on the south side of the high school on the east side. Uh, greenhouse currently sits right around that area, but we'd be relocating that if we ended up Correct. going with this floor plan, um, but still yet to be determined. Oops. Uh, upgrades to the, the football stadium, when we say that, there's the structure of the actual uh, locker rooms that are underneath the bleachers is really bad. Uh, those need to be replaced. There are many different options we're looking at. We've talked about at least three, I know, with um, our, our design team, um, and that this is one of them, showing moving the lockers out from underneath and going with an independent. Uh, there's also the option of keeping them underneath or relocating them to an entirely different area that doesn't show here. But again, this is early. Um, we just want to show the areas that we're looking and investing in. Also, you can see on the north side there, and it states here, new locker rooms. Uh, we're also looking at new concessions if you want to pop to that. 
um, and new entries, new entry gate options. So what those exactly look like, we don't know yet. Um, and so we just know that we need to modernize them. We need to look uh, sharp, and that's what we, what we want to do when we consider these designs. How can we uh, make our campus continue to, to look better and better as we invest? Uh, another area here, which I know we've already received a lot of questions on. I'm guessing we'll see some tonight. This is really early, but um, this just shows a layout for uh, baseball and softball fields. All we know at this point is we need to add some additional fields. We know we need to add uh, at least a baseball and a softball field on site uh, to be able to, to bring all of our athletics onto this campus. So this is one layout where it shows it there. Uh, but we, again, would need to add concessions in that area no matter what we do. So, and yeah, and Matt's right with adding into those, we need those. At the same time, our current fields uh, need to be updated, need to be upgraded so that we, uh, like for example, currently the baseball field, we cannot hold any IHSAA uh, sectional regionals uh, because of our seating. Uh, we have some issues there. I know we have some issues with our dugouts. Um, I know Greg has had issues in the past about his, with his outfields. We have drainage issues. So where well, the fields look nice, we still have a lot of issues there. And maybe it's just upgrading yeah. and going forward. So, but yeah, again, just a rendering, uh, doing some upgrades. We know there are going to be upgrades. Uh, this shows the bus parking area and the maintenance building for uh, not just our buses, but also for the rest of our equipment we have on site. Uh, again, a layout there at the, this would be located at the, northwest corner of our furthest west parking lots. And there's just an overall to show kind of a highlight of all the areas that we plan on touching with this project. Again, the information provided last night, tonight, and we will next week is really just to, to let you know where we're looking at spending money, not necessarily exactly what it's going to look like. So I know it's hard at this early stage, but um, as we've said before, we're we're really, really early in the stages here. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do with the design team, with our administrators, um, with the athletic department, obviously, as they're going to be involved in all these decisions. So these are all the areas we're planning on touching with this construction project. So what, what does that mean as an impact to you, you know, our taxpayers, to each of us, each of us even in the room here today? Uh, what we looked at uh, for the overall cost of the bond, we're looking at a $15.6 million bond. Uh, the, the calculation we're showing up here as far as what determines the rate that the taxpayers have on that, what well, we've asked Baker Tilly, which isn't here this evening, we've asked them to kind of give us a worst case scenario. So take our current interest rates and bump them by a percent. Uh, we, we can't, we don't have a crystal ball and can tell you exactly where our uh, bond rates are going to be, but we, we feel very comfortable with their guidance that it will stay within that 1%. But if it does stay at less than 1% or at 1% um, of the uh, interest rate where it's currently setting, then we could look at actually having to pay an interest over this time of around $6 million. The estimated annual payment would be $2.3 million. Estimated maximum debt service uh, for this project, $0.54. Cents. Um, that's not necessarily, we'll get to the, your specific tax rates later. So what is that as far as the impact that adds to our current tax rate? That's where you can see that right there at 15 cents, just shy of 16 cents. That's what it adds to the current tax rate per thousand dollars. So that would allow us the uh, proceeds available for construction, as you can see there, $15.2 million roughly. Okay, so what does that mean to you personally on your own homestead or your own agricultural farmland or your commercial property? Well, this addresses really all those. Uh, what we've been told is the average uh, home in median home value in the state of Indiana is that $94,800, and that's why it's got the uh, parentheses around the three there. So what that means to somebody with roughly a $100,000 home is that for a year, you could expect to pay roughly $46.79 more in taxes to be able to do this construction project. Uh, if you own an acre of farmland, roughly $2 per acre additional to be able to uh, do this project here at Lewis Cass. And then commercial, as you can see there, commercial rental property, you're looking at $159 more per year. So 
Uh, our board, when we, and I didn't mention this earlier, but our board, as we established what construction we really wanted to get done, there was a lot more than what was on this list that we really need to attack. But unfortunately, uh, just like myself, I mean, there's not unlimited resources available for that. And so we wanted to make sure we were making the tax impact on our corporation as small as possible. And so we looked around at what other school corporations are doing, uh, what they cost to, to be able to you know, live in their district and pay their, uh, their property taxes. And so we, we established that we definitely want to stay in, in the, well, definitely less than the greatest ones, but in kind of the same people we're competing with. And so you'll see there uh, Logan Sports on the far right hand side there at $1.67, uh, Western School Corporation, $1.20. North Judson, Clinton Central, Delphi, these are all schools, even Pioneer, that have a higher tax rate than we do right now. So as we established our priority list, we said, okay, we want to reinvest, but we don't want to invest so much that we're pushing our tax rate higher than those that we're competing with. So what we did is we established that solid black line right there, and we created, okay, what are the priorities that we can do to stay within that tax rate? And that's how that line was established, and that's our intention with this $15.6 million is to stay with that tax rate. So where do we go from here? Um, as far as our timeline, our intentions, we've already engaged with uh, our design team, like I've already mentioned. We're having public hearings. We had one last night. We've got the informational meeting tonight. If it warrants it, we'll have one Tuesday night. Uh, and then we'll have our final meeting on the 10th. Uh, after that hearing, we basically go quiet for a while while we work in design. We figure out you know, what this is truly going to look like. And then uh, our intention is to finalize our public hearings in August to, to be able to finalize all of our bond commitments to we're able to obtain our bond proceeds somewhere in the time frame between September and January of this coming year. That allows us the flexibility to go to market when our bond rates are low. If our interest rate, if we have an opportunity there, a larger window, we're not stuck with uh, accepting what we have right before we need our uh, construction money. So this gives us the flexibility some time to sell bonds. We don't intend in starting construction projects until this says December. We're hoping that that happens, but realistically, probably first quarter. Uh, we're going to wait for our, uh, hopefully we can wait for our tax, uh, our previous bonds to roll off in December. So we're really look, targeting January construction start. And we look at this as a really a two-year project. So uh, we know that some of the facilities that we're going to be disrupting, uh, we can't just take them out anytime we want. You can't just start tearing out a football stadium in the middle of football season so so we know there's going to be some flexibility there but the intention is that by the end of 2022 uh, we have construction complete sure yeah the later we sell bonds would be the later of our final completion so if we sell them not until January we may see our final completion going into January February March even into June of 2023 so it just all depends on uh, where we are financially, what our drawings come in, and how great KGG and T-Bird are, <laughs> which are fantastic. But no, hopefully the sooner the better. But uh, yeah, hopefully um, everything goes well with the bond sales and we can get moving on all of our drawings and start, start breaking ground. So it's time for questions. Just like last evening, we will give the opportunity. I know there's probably a few questions already preloaded from last night. I think there's some questions that came in, but we're going to give the opportunity for anybody in the room to first ask a question. If you have a question, feel free. I believe they've got a mic in the back. Yeah, we have a couple mics in back. You guys have any questions? No? Okay. Anybody else in the audience have questions? It's hard to see with those lights. All right. Well, with that, we'll move to online questions. Okay, here we go. Why are we building a new baseball field when the one at the Galvestic campus has been removed? First question. What? Repeat the end of that. When the Galvestic one has been removed? It says, um, why are we building a new baseball field when the one at the Galvestic campus has been removed? Um, I think the Galveston campus is still there, right? It is still there. Uh, but the idea is that, especially as we talk about attracting people to come to our facilities, really the main campus here is where we want all of our focus toward. Um, right now, there's not a great parking area over there. The dugouts aren't, you know, that great. Um, it's not the best environment for people to watch a game. And so uh, we looked at, again, we've got a lot of feedback that if we created more fields, it would be best to be here. And so that's kind of where our focus has been. Yeah, and one of the things we want to do is stay competitive in what our campus looks like. And if we expect to have it, 
our facilities to be competitive and look nice, I would not think that's something that Galveston would represent for Lewis Cass as something we want people to see as this is who we are, this is who we are as a king. And that's something we want to do is transition to have everything on one campus. Okay, next one. One of these conceptual drawings was of the baseball and softball facilities. The conceptual drawings showed the baseball and softball facilities being wiped out and four new facilities being constructed, two softball fields and two baseball fields. Would it not make more sense to upgrade the present baseball and softball fields and add one new baseball and one new softball facility behind our current ones? There are updates and additions at both current sites that could be completed rather than destroying them both and spending money senselessly. I'd like to do a second. Oh, yeah. That's a very good question. It's actually probably the, the most common question I've received even uh, before the meeting tonight uh, because we presented this a couple weeks ago. And I got several questions last night and this morning uh, in the same regard. Again, I'll say what I said last night. We gave our design team an open canvas. And they said, if we have an open canvas, this is what we do. This is what we would do. That's not say, us saying what we're doing, right? Uh, we made some last minute changes to the conceptual mainly because they should wipe it out the band barn, but this is not what we're saying we're doing. Tonight, the idea is just that we're gonna be adding two more fields. Obviously, we don't wanna spend money where money's not needed to be spent, okay? Um, so, as we evaluate the different designs, evaluate the different budgets, there's actually been a few different designs that have been discussed, not put conceptual designs up yet, but um, we're gonna evaluate all those things. We're gonna evaluate the design, the cost, everything, um, the curb appeal before we make any decisions, and the people that are involved in those uh, currently will be involved in those decisions as well. Okay, and the last one. In the final plan picture, it looks as if we were going to one playground area for the elementary. It also looks as if the size of the lower grade elementary playground, so according to this drawing, would be in fact cutting our playground in half. Would there still be a divide between lower grades and older grades? If not, how will you accommodate having enough time to allow for all grades to use it? Are we updating any of this equipment? So, it's a good question and it's not very well shown on here just because it's an existing area and it's not highlighted up there, but the existing playground still is intact on the northeast corner it is still of, there. and I, I know people live stream can't see that, but actually up on the very north corner, very yeah. top. Oh, like, oh, oh, you mean the pre-existing one's yeah. clear up here, yes. So that playground still exists, the one that's most commonly used, um, it still exists. We talked about relocating one here. Um, this is a really big gray area for us, honestly. Um, we know we've already found out that the re relocation of that ditch is going to be pretty expensive. So um, what this area looks like, it's really gray, but to directly answer the question, right now we shall still show two separate playgrounds. That's all the questions. Again, just like last night, I'd like to give a few more minutes in case any other questions come in. Ryan, Ryan has his dancing boots on, so I think we can, think we can have it. <laughs> Still nothing? Okay. With that, uh, we will close here briefly. One thing I would like to say before closing, um, again, I, I, I've said this a few times and I want to reiterate it, that the, the designs, the exact designs that we're showing up here tonight, we don't want people to get held up on. What we want to know is do we have the community support to continue to reinvest in these projects? The exact look of these projects, the feel of these projects will be much different when they actually finish our, our design charrette next week and then we start working through the process. But the idea behind these meetings, these informational meetings, is the community behind us in continue to reinvest in these areas that we're talking about. And we will conclude that next Wednesday at our public meeting. With the amount of information and feedback we have now, um, my understanding is that it really doesn't warrant a meeting next Tuesday night on the 9th. So we will be canceling our June 9th informational meeting. That doesn't mean we won't be responding to any questions. Any questions that come from now until what was the date you mentioned, Tim? Till June 10th. June 10th. Any questions you have, we will reach out, we will respond to those questions regarding this construction project, but we will not be holding 
the June 9th meeting informational session? As far as the public hearing is concerned, it is till June 10th until we close the hearing. And then after that, if you have any questions, you can contact myself and I can give you, answer any of your questions you need after that and uh, to help you out understand that anything that you have. So yeah, keep asking your questions, but please make sure you direct them to the, the superintendent. Um, you can as the board, but they can't at that time period for 30 days. They cannot promote the school um, unless they just address facts only. So they will only be, give, be able to give you the facts where I can do things a little bit different because that's part of my job description. Yeah. We do have one more question, so go ahead, Mr. Crozier. Okay. Uh, number one, it says, can the previous kindergarten building to the south of the elementary be used for classroom space versus new construction? That's a very good question. Actually, the kindergarten classrooms from years ago were planned to be demolished in the last construction project. Uh, but because of needing to utilize them for, we actually used them for construction trailers during construction, um, they've, they've kind of just stayed there. Um, can they be? Yes. Is it best for them to be used? We feel that it's best to have all of the classrooms together as one. Um, so that's the idea of, of actually bringing that and connecting to the, yeah. the school building. Yeah, we'd prefer to have it attached to the school building for safety reasons because now it's all by itself. And as we push more and more to make sure our schools are more safe, um, that is a huge safety measure for us because they are isolated and we would not be able to help them out, especially with our SRO going back and forth to buildings. It's an easier flow. Safety We're, resource officer. Safety, yeah. Safety resource officer, sorry. <laughs> we have too many acronyms in education. So, yeah, it, it's supposed to be already demolished and that's all on me. <laughs> Will each of the corporation's bonds be paid in full? Corporation bonds? Uh, we had that up there last night. This one would be paid in full. The construction would be done in 2022. I believe it's done in 2035. This one will be Which done is the too. last bond. The other one rolls off, I believe, 2030. That's correct. The last bond. Okay, that's all I have. And even though we have bonds that are out there that were sold, we still have general obligation bonds called GO bonds. Uh, we try to make sure that we keep a, uh, for emergencies, so right now we have a million dollar capability as we go through our bonds, we would like to have that three million dollar capability for GO bonds. Well, they're a lot different than your lease rental bonds, which we are going into. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send them to the administration or to any of your board members before July, or sorry, June 10th. Anything before June 10th, you can reach out to board members, ask any questions. We do have to remain silent after the 10th. They have to go to the administration office after that. Um, since we won't be having the meeting on the 9th, will you guys have this presentation at least available in case they have questions? Yep, good question. So the, the presentations are, will be on our website until we go clear in August and uh, we're approved for the sell-off bond. So all of our presentations, including the 10th, will be on there. Everything is up there from last night. And uh, we're at one point, we're going to create a, an, an FAQ and have that up there for everybody and go through that. So just give us a little bit of time to get that put up there until all the questions come in so we are not duplicating some of the questions. But we will have an FAQ at one point for the bond uh, that will be after the tent. So that way anybody has any questions, it's up there. All right. Great. If nothing else, motion to adjourn. we will close. I need a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Ryan Zeck. Second by Rick Lee. All in favor? Aye. We're closed. Thanks, guys.